Right. Yeah. How many others do you know about? Um, yeah, we have about 12. That's a lot. Is it, it is a lot. Is it because the economy is sort of pumping up? And um, just a coincidence? Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, yeah. so what, what I find is funding for affordable housing kind of lags the economy. Mm -hmm. So when things are good, a couple years later, you know, when things are good, there's more money in city and state coffers. They put funding in affordable housing programming. So, you know, it takes about a year to decide to do that, and then, like, about a year to allocate it, and then, like, you know, a couple years to get it built. And then when things start tanking, it takes a little while for the money in the affordable housing programs to dry up. So part of why we have all those projects in our pipeline right now is I joined Team DC in 2011, and honestly, I was like, what am I thinking taking this job? We own four parking lots. We have no clue how we're going to pay for them. There's no money anywhere. Um, but then there was little bits of state money. And so there's a big program called Cap and Trade, which is where they're selling like the polluters tax. So if you choose to not meet emission targets and continue to pollute, you have to pay this tax. Mm -hmm. And it's actually generating a lot of money statewide. And one of many, 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 many uses for it is to build affordable housing. And the theory is that um, it will reduce vehicle miles traveled. So by people <coughs> being able to live more affordably close to jobs, they won't have to drive so far. Um, and also lower income people tend to have lower vehicle ownership. Um, so that's part of what the money in the system is now. Um, like Eddie and Taylor has money from that program and the next project I'm gonna talk about is Yosemite Apartments. We're applying for money from that source. Um, so these five, the, the five, um, <coughs> the five um, RAD projects are senior and disabled. O'Farrell Towers, which I actually didn't include on this list. I actually probably should have, I'm sorry. O'Farrell Towers is a development that TNDC owns. It's about 101 units. And on the ground floor, there's a senior center that's operated by Northern California Presbyterian Homes and Services. We're doing a rehab of that project. It's, it was built in the 80s, so it's about 40 years old. The original rehab was driven by um, water intrusion problems that we need to fix. And then we're taking the opportunity to upgrade the elevator at Davids, which will help us clean the, the front building in the future and make unit upgrades. Um, so we still do a lot of rehab, and then we also do some new construction. So we have, um, in addition to Eddie and Taylor, which will serve families, we have a development in Mission Bay that will serve families, and we have another building on, um, on Mission in Soma that is gonna serve families, and those will all be starting construction over the next year. And we're completing a senior project in the Western Edition that happens to be on the parking lot of the Rosa Parks Public Housing. Rosa Parks Public Housing has almost 200 units and we're bidding another 100 next door. So actually, I'm glad that you mentioned that because um, if you know any folks that would be interested in living in that part of town, it's a really great deal if you're a senior. You have to be 62 or over and it has this particular HUD subsidy called a HUD 202. And what, it, it, what that, it operates like in a way like Section 8, where you pay only 30% of your income. So you can have no income and move into that building. And it's brand new construction, so it's it will be it's designed to serve folks with disabilities. It's looking nice. I live in that neighborhood, so I go by there a lot. And now that you can actually see what it looks like. Yeah, it's like the scaffolding like, down. It's attractive uh, uh, design. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I feel that way. Anyway. Yeah. I do, I am concerned the people who were in the older building behind it, mm -hmm. so they, those that are at that level, they're not going to, their windows are not going to So the window is actually on Rosa Parks 1, and then we're actually, we've actually changed our building because Rosa Parks 2 is deemed not a great thing. It's going to be called Willie B. Kennedy Apartments, and that's named for a supervisor um, that had served in that area. But those windows on Rosa Parks, those are actually, I don't know why they built the building, but it's actually a single loaded corridor building. So those windows are not unit windows, they're hallway windows. Oh. So okay. it's, the people will still be impacted when they come yeah. out of their unit in the hall, but it's, at least it's not like, not they used to have a view way across the street and now yeah. they have a view of a building. Okay. Their units still look the other way, where they do still have a courtyard. Oh, okay. On the uh, south side. Yeah. Can, we, can we steer back Thank to the uh, yeah. developments? Because uh, uh, yeah. we have, I never yeah. have the person's going to show up. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, that's so, fine. I mean, we can go back to that, but it's oh, just, yeah. I, I it's just that we should try to get the ones on the agenda. Uh, yes. And so I ended up throwing O'Farrell Towers in there. I'm, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's in the tender line. So yeah. that was, it's that in was the tender line. <laughs> um, so then the next one I want, and that one is, that rehab is underway right now, and we expect to be done with it. Mostly by the end of this year, but it'll probably go into March of next year. 
And that's another example where the ground, I actually walked by it this morning, the ground, they were having some kind of like coffee hour now, and a lot of people were in the lobby, but it doesn't have very good meeting space for the residents. And so we're adding an addition to the backside that will create more, more space for the residential community. Are you doing any rehab of the actual senior center? Or no. is that not over here? No. Okay. They'll be impacted a little bit, and we've been talking to them about the impacts, but we're not up to updating their space. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so the last one I wanted to mention was Yosemite Apartments. I'm super excited about this. It's a beautiful older building. Um, I think the address is 480 Eddie, so it's just up the street here. It's 32 units. It's one of the um, it's one of the first buildings that TNDC um, bought in this neighborhood. And at the time that we bought it, the city and TNDC's MO was just to buy the building and get it into nonprofit control and you know keep the rents affordable. But we never did a big rehab on it. We have always wanted to, but somehow we had eight original buildings, and this is the only one that's never had a big rehab. And so we've been working since before my time at TNDC at least. I think they started in late 2009, doing an assessment of the building, bringing in an architect and contractor, designing a rehab, and we finally, with this new state funding I was just talking about, found a window of opportunity where we're able to put together a financing plan that minimizes the need for funds from the city. So that rehab will be very comprehensive. It will um, include um, seismic upgrades, fire life safety upgrades, um, accessibility upgrades, there'll be a new limited use, limited access, is that what LUMA stands for? A way to help you get up the stairs, because there's a stairs. Um, a, a new elevator that won't be a big gurney size elevator. Um, we should be making some improvements to the back area um, to allow there to be some enhanced community space and a garden there. Um, and the commercial space there is going to be upgraded as well. We haven't been able to lease that space for the last couple of years because it really is not in very rent ready condition. Um, and then there will also be unit upgrades because those, those units have not been upgraded in like 40 years. And what's the timeline? The timeline for that is we are applying for that competitive state funding now. So it's a two stage application. We submitted the first state, the concept application yesterday. The full application is due in June. So we won't really know until this summer whether we're a go. If we get the state funds, we'll be moving full speed ahead. Um, and then I would estimate it will probably be at least two years before we're in construction. Because it takes about a year to do the design and then about a year to get through permitting. Any other questions about our Yosemite? Sounds like we should go to this actual location. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Field trip? Yeah. Yeah. Those are really beautiful units. They're studios, and they have their own kitchens and baths. They're big. Okay. Uh, now, you said there are 32 <coughs> units. Uh, that's originally, and it's going to be 32. No, there's no, going to be no bifurcation. No, no we're not okay. planning to reconfigure them at all. Okay. And I think they're all studios except for maybe one, one bedroom. Uh -huh. And they're pretty generously sized. They're nice. Uh -huh. They have big windows. So management on staff, um, you know, on site? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I don't think we're going to be increasing the management presence, and one of the challenges for that site, not only for maintenance, but also for services, is that it's only 32 units. So it shares its staffing with some of the neighboring buildings, most specifically, I think, Cameo. Across the street. Yeah, across the street. It shares a manager between those two. And then in terms of services, we have one social worker who floats between eight of the older TVC buildings that don't have standalone service contracts. So that person is not, you know, is maybe their half. <coughs> there is some sort of office, though, obviously, somewhere. And on the building? I mean, in the building, we've got a management well, unit. You know, I don't office. think that there is. And is honestly, there a community room? Uh, is there? No, so this is actually a good question. So we had, in the original scoping for the rehab plan, we were going to convert the commercial space to office and restroom and community space. Um, our, and that's still, we're still early on, so that's still a possibility, but our current thinking is to keep that as commercial. Um, partly because the income would help the, the property sustain over time, because 32 units is a small number of units just in terms of operating efficiencies. Um, and also because this is a little more of an abstract and lofty goal, like TNDC would like to 
use its commercial space in some ways to be, you know, benefiting the community and having some kind of community well, development. Well, you have in the past. You've had the uh, you've had voter stuff out of it. We had Chris Daly had his uh, campaign office mm -hmm. there, uh, and you currently had the garden. Uh, right, we do something food, related just, we to food distribution, distribution from there. So mm -hmm. I mean, everything that you've done there has somewhat. And I think even the SRO Plaza was kind of there because of Chris Daly's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so there is. So I think the to answer your times. question, I we I just got a recommendation from someone in our services staff that I need to follow up on, but she thought there might be some room in the back to do an addition in the back uh -huh. to create some Extra. office or community space. So I just got that suggestion maybe a week or two ago. But that would be nice to have it all, right? To have uh, it. I mean, you've got to have your plans so yeah. before you get <laughs> knocked down a wall. And get right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and already has for for the for the thirty two units already has a laundry room for the. Um, there is a laundry room, and I think right now it's currently not accessible. You have to go up a couple or down a couple steps to get to it. So you might want. To so that's that to that's part of what we're going to deal with, and like another safety thing we're dealing with is like all the gas meters. You have to walk by all the gas meters to get to the laundry room. Like you know, so we, there, there's just a lot of stuff we want to clean up because it's just not. To, today, no one would build a building right. that way. Though it's beautiful, no one would build a beautiful exterior today either. But so we're trying to organize the insides to be safer and more accessible. Betty? Yeah, one thought about the commercial space, and this is not for me as someone um, in the neighborhood pointed this out, but they prefer commercial space that's open in the, at night rather than a place that closes, a, you know, a nonprofit, let's say, that closes at 5 o'clock. It's mm -hmm. open into the evening, 9 o'clock, then to the restaurant or something or the market or that. Then there's activity. It's not dark after you know five or six. Right. So I mean that's someone else's thought that. Uh, right. Actually, I'll and I don't know because you're... the problem is that is the problem. Uh, you, uh, for example, I was amazed, and we lost the swap swap yet. I thought they'd close at eight o'clock at night or something. Most of the restaurants do. They were closed at uh, ten o'clock. Lafayette Cafe. Uh, to just close. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, uh, there aren't that many businesses open after certain hours, yeah. unless you have a liquor license or something, yeah. and then it closes around um, anywhere from two to, from 10 to two, uh, 12 to 2, depending on your conditions of your license. So, and those are on the corners, those are not in the mid blocks. Yeah. And so this is the problem with people trying to navigate the neighborhood. You see something on the corner, but nothing in between. And so as far as security and safety, it's not there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is the problem now uh, where you're particularly on that block, there's several developments going on, and uh, um, and they're going to be all, you're going to have to be maneuvering around the uh, development sites uh, mm -hmm. in the next couple of years as they uh, put up their projects. Mm -hmm. And how does that affect particularly that block? Because I don't know if each block is going to have its different. But you know, right there, you've got three or four uh, developments going on uh, on the uh, corner block of Eddie. Right. Uh, which again is a, a, a problem with uh, uh, people trying to come in to and from in that particular location. Um, and one of the main problems we have down there is uh, the building owners are not really taking the time to uh, light their, their sidewalks. Um, and uh, they're relying on the uh, sidewalks lighting from the city, which is not the sidewalk, it's the street. And uh, we need to have, all the buildings need to have their own luminous lights right. um, lighting down onto their uh, uh, frontage of their, of their business. So one yes. comment about that, which I don't know how prevalent this is as a reason, but I know on Franciscan Towers, for example, when we just did our rehab, now we're, more high, we're much more highly regulated than most owners, but we wanted to have brighter lighting on the exterior of Franciscan Towers and the historic um, planners would not allow us to do that. So I'm just saying that might be a body you need, have a fight to, with everybody, huh? you need to lobby. I mean, they are what, challenging. Would you have to let us know these things? I mean, you know, uh, they, would because let you, they would let you put lights, but not as bright as you Right, right. So I don't know what we'll do. We may brighten the lights up now that we are. But what you have, have done, our certificates of occupancy. But talking about Francisco, what you have done is put up those signs saying, you know, respect our neighborhood. Pet. I forget what they say, but the thing is, you oh, we're trying to, that we're trying that anti-urination paint that we're talking about. Well, I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, the thing is, I, I, I just say that you have to sometimes remind people this is a people's property, not right. to 
uh, you know, do certain things uh, on your property, particularly with brand you know, just right. freshly done. So. Right, right. And one thing we're just thinking about Franciscan Tower with some of the challenges, like we are trying for Eddie and Taylor, anything we build new, to try to minimize those corners that invite. And also the crevices. Of right, that's is, a, We have these, uh, along uh, two and one turf, you have these indefinite temptations uh, which uh, people end up hiding into. And yeah, they invite not good things to happen yeah. in those spaces, so. Um, we are trying to avoid that. Um, can I mention one other thing, and not, not to put you on the spot, but <laughs> I heard you say you are uh, an MTA District 6 yep. liaison. So I, I don't know if you're aware of this, but TDC is partnering with the MTA. Everything got worked out like three days ago. Um, then probably not. <laughs> yeah, so, but so you know, um, in connection with the state financing application, what's interesting about this state program is called Affordable Housing Sustainable Communities People also call it cap and trade, but it really encourages, pretty much requires coordinating investments in housing with investments in improvements to make transportation, like pedestrian, bike, or um, public transit um, improvements. So we are partnering with MTA to help pay for some of the, um, I think they're really, pro well, I, it's traffic calming and probably pedestrian safety. So there's some bulb outs. There's like three bulb outs that we've agreed to incorporate into our project financing, and we're applying to the state for financing to complete. So we, you know, we appreciate MTA's partnering in that, and the city family's partnering in that. So we're all one big. That was the yeah. best. Call and I'm learning I more about Vision Zero. So, so, you know, no, sorry, you weren't even angry at me when you were calling me out. So. No, 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 no. I want to recognize <laughs> that. Uh, and so I was, we'll, we'll scold you at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to show off that I'm learning about Vision Zero, so I was trying to drop that over here. He's like, no, that's not Vision Zero. So I know there's a lot of different yeah. efforts that are underway in this neighborhood um, to try to make the street experience safer for the people that live here, which I think is great. So it's nice that, I think it's actually a good thing with this funding. It's actually sort of forcing us to talk to MTA, which is good. <laughs> like, well, they should you know, be doing their outreach. Of, um, we have the various bus, um, Rapid transit's coming through our neighborhood. Right. Uh, we want to have what? Okay, well you are with them. I, I, I really have to say this: uh, the, uh, the the park on High and um, High and Turk. Um, yeah, it's mini both, park. Both, the mini park. Yeah. Both sides of the uh, the bus. It's a it's a bus linkage, and mm -hmm. both sides are right now under rehab. You should only do one at a time because it's you're putting out taking out two bus stops, and it's a bus linkage because. Uh, somebody going from one bus line to the next, yeah. uh, you can't. So it, it, it actually makes it so everybody's got to walk all the way around the whole park. Um, they yeah, are, and actually, they can't even do that. They can't even, they can't even walk on that side. It's, it's all blocked off. So both sides of the park are, are blocked off. Yeah. And, and also, you took out two yeah. bus stops, one on each side. Yeah, it's park planning it, because you can't. You should be taking out two whole bus stops at the same time, especially ones that are linkages. Uh, that's poor uh, planning. I understand maybe it's the contractor trying to do the easiest thing possible, yeah. but as far as uh, um, I was in a car a couple days ago trying to go down uh, Turk Street and both sides of the street, there was only one, you could, there's three lanes and you had to go down the middle lane uh, and that, 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 that also creates a, a siphon um, So it, it, uh, because of all this construction on both sides of the street. So I mean this again, very poor planning. Um, um, you know, I, I don't know the particulars about, you know, the, why the decisions made there. I know that, um, you know, one of the things that we're trying to do is to combine with other agencies to do as much at one time as possible to minimize the length of the disturbances um, that exist. Um, so, you know, that might be a part of, of trying to look at it that way. Um, but I can reach out. I mean, so my role is, like the new liaison is to come to these kinds of meetings and be available to you guys um, if you know so I can direct you to the right people to talk to or something like that um, but I'll I can follow up with you on uh, well we all we really enjoy having whoever we want to bring to their meetings because this is the one of the if there's only so many decision-making yeah. bodies in the neighborhood this is one of them yeah. or, or we're not decision-making bodies but uh, we're we stakeholder meetings and we try to encourage everybody yeah. to talk about these issues uh, instead well, well, of just doing them and then we, we have to experience it the bad way. Yeah. Well, that's fine, Mirrors, um, to, to kind of come to these meetings and be on the face and when there's news and stuff to have the relationship with you guys. Well, 
and transactional about specific projects. So maybe he could be on the agenda. You know, well, well, we're not asking him. No, he should be on the agenda. It should be the, the 